partial sums method is a method where numbers are decomposed into expanded form and like values are added. This is called the partial sums method because students are finding the partial sums for each place value and then combining the partial sums to determine the total. In this example, students will use base 10 blocks and pictorial representations to determine the partial sums. Here's our real world scenario. Carlos has a collection of sports cards. He has 68 football cards, 22 baseball cards, and 35 basketball cards. How many sports cards does Carlos have in his collection? We're going to begin by representing each number using base 10 blocks and in a pictorial representation. Model how the numbers are, can be written in expanded form to show the value of each digit. The expanded form shows the value of the tenths and the value of the ones for each of the numbers. So we have 60 plus 8, 20 plus 2, and 30 plus 5. Now we will determine the partial sums of the tens by combining the tens and recording the corresponding equation to show the partial sums of the tens. When we combine the tens, we have 60 plus 20, that's 80, plus 30 more, we can compose 100. We have 10 tens to compose 100, and we have one 10 left. So the value of our tens is 100. 10. In our pictorial representation, we can we see that we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 tens. We can use 10 tens to compose 100, and we have 110 left. So this has a value of 110. We're going to write our equation 60 plus 20 plus 30. 60 plus 20 plus 30 is 110. The partial sums of the tens is 110. Next, we'll combine the ones and record the corresponding equation to show the partial sums of the ones. So we have 8 plus 2, that's 10, plus 5 more. That's 15. The value of the ones is 15. And our pictorial representation, 8 plus 2 more can be used to compose 10, plus 5 more is 15. For our equation, we're going to add 8 plus 2 plus 5. 8 plus 2 plus 5 is 15. So the partial sums of the ones is 15. Now we're going to combine the partial sums of the tens and the ones to determine the number of cards Carlos had in his collection. 110 plus 15 is 125. Carlos had 125 cards in his collection. Partial sums are used to scaffold students' understanding of the standard algorithm. When utilizing partial sums in a horizontal format, students may start from the right or the left. Let's look at our real world scenario. Nicholas went to the petting zoo. There were 24 ponies, 32 rabbits, and 16 goats. How many ponies, rabbits, and goats were at the petting zoo? So I'm going to put my numbers into my boxes. 24 ponies, 32 rabbits, 16 goats. Now I want to model how my numbers can be written in expanded form to show the value of each digit. So 24 can be written as 20 plus 4. 32 can be written as 30 plus 2. And 16 can be written as 10 plus 6. Now I want to add the values of each place and then combine them for a total sum. So I'm going to start with my 10s. 20 plus 30 plus 10 gives me a partial sum of 60. I'm going to add my 1s, 4 plus 2 plus 6, I know 4 and 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12, my partial sum for my 1s is 12. I know 60 plus 12 is 72. There were 72 ponies, rabbits, and goats at the petting zoo. 
partial sums can also be determined using a vertical format. When utilizing partial sums in a vertical format, students may start by adding the ones or the tens before combining the partial sums. Let's look at our real world scenario. There were 14 penguins at the zoo. Then 28 penguins arrived at the zoo from Ralph's rescue. The next day, 17 more arrived from Katie's critter rescue. How many penguins are now at the zoo? So to determine the total of penguins, let's utilize the partial sums method. Write the quantities of penguins on a place value chart in a vertical format. So I had 14 penguins at the zoo, 28 arrived from Ralph's rescue, and 17 from Katie's critter rescue. Now I want to model the numbers in expanded form to show the value of each digit. So I know 14 can be modeled as 10 and four ones, 28, 20 with eight ones, and 17, 10, and seven ones. Now I'm gonna add up the partial sums. I'll start in the tens place, 20, 30, 40. I know eight and four is 12. 12 plus seven is 19. Then I'm going to add my partial sums. I know 40 and 19 is 59. There were a total of 59 penguins at the zoo. Students are expected to add up to four two-digit numbers using the standard algorithm. To support students' understanding of the standard algorithm, a place value chart and a pictorial representation will be used to represent the addition. A strip diagram is also used to represent the knowns and unknowns. Let's look at this real world scenario. Sammy had 42 Pokemon cards. His mom bought him 36 cards at the store and gave them to Sammy to put in his collection. Sammy's friend also gave him 29 Pokemon cards to put in his collection. How many Pokemon cards does Sammy have now? First, the knowns and unknowns should be represented on the strip diagram. So we know Sammy had 42 Pokemon cards. His mom gave him 36 more Pokemon cards. And then his friend also gave him 29 Pokemon cards. Our unknown is the total number of Pokemon cards. The quantities can then be represented on a place value chart. Based on previous lessons, students should determine the value of each place value and regroup when needed. So we know Sammy had 42 Pokemon cards. Then his mom bought him 36 Pokemon cards. And then his friend gave him 29 Pokemon cards. When we look in the ones place, we can see we have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 ones. Students should recognize that they can compose a 10. So we're going to regroup 10 ones to compose a 10. When we look in the tens place, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 tens. Students should recognize that we can use 10 tens to regroup and compose a 100. Based on our pictorial model, we can see that Sammy has 107 Pokemon cards. Finally, the quantity should be recorded in the standard algorithm. Notice this work mat has columns representing the hundreds place, the tens place, and the ones place. Ensure that students are adding in the ones place first and regrouping if needed, and then adding the tens and regrouping to the hundreds place if necessary. So we can see we have two plus six is eight, plus nine is 17. We're gonna regroup to the tens place. We have five, eight, nine, 10. We're gonna regroup to the hundreds place. Sammy had 107 Pokemon cards. The following represents a common misconception related to the standard algorithm. Rather than understanding the place values represented in the standard algorithm and how to regroup to the next place value, a student may incorrectly record the entire sum of the digits in each column. So when adding the seven ones and the nine ones, the student knows that that's 16, 
but rather than regrouping, they record the 16 under the ones place. When adding the eight tens and the six tens, the student knows that's 14 tens, but rather than regrouping, the student records both digits here in the tens place. The student incorrectly assumes that the sum is 1,416. The following strategies can be used to help students overcome this misconception. Students can use base 10 blocks in a place value chart to represent the quantities and model the addition. When using the base 10 blocks, students should notice that there are 16 ones. 10 ones can be regrouped to compose a 10. There are six ones remaining in the ones place. Students should notice that there are 15 tens. 10 tens can be regrouped to compose a 100. After the regrouping has occurred, students should recognize that the sum is 156. Students can also use partial sums to find the total. Students can add the value of the ones and the value of the tens. So when we add the ones, seven plus nine is 16. When we add the tens, 80 plus 60 is 140. Then we combine the partial sums, 140 plus 16 is 156. Using partial sums, students should determine that the sum is 156. Using either the base 10 model or the partial sums method, students should see that the sum is 156 rather than 1,416. This will help students overcome this misconception related to a lack of regrouping in the standard algorithm. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Elementary Math Minutes. We hope you'll find these videos helpful, and we look forward to you joining us next time. See you then.